Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, now we proceed to the last keynote presentation of the day. And uh, we have Mr. Rahul Nargotra, Vice President, Sales, Asia Pacific Trillient. I welcome Mr. Rahul. So, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the session. And I'd really like to extend my thanks to organizers for giving Trillient a good platform on the discussion and also a good platform to introduce our briefly our solutions and case studies. I have a very brief 15 slide presentation, not even 15, where I'm gonna cover a brief introduction on Trillent organization and also very relevant case studies in the region, which will most likely you know, bring back the question whether RF is best or cellular is best because we have both of them in the region. So slide first. You know, Trillent networks, I'm not very sure everybody on the attendee list knows about Trillent. We have been aggressively pushing Trillet in the region, in India for the last four and a half years. I've been leading it from the front with a lot of support from our team. And now we also have a team in India. So we are looking at India as our next big market to go grow our installations, both for cellular and RF. Trillet Networks is a network solution company providing connectivity solutions for smart grid, IoT and smart cities. We have our hardware and software solutions to help customers to connect multiple devices on the same single platform. This is very important because customers can maximize their operational efficiencies. And at the same time, they can also open new markets and revenue streams. Like the same AMI network can be used for different applications like smart street lighting, DA, IoT, and so many other applications. Trillion was founded in Canada in 1985. The picture on the screen is our headquarters in North Carolina, Cary. It appears even further now because of the travel ban, but that's how we are located. We also have a strong team in Canada and Granby to support our engineering platforms, our development works globally. In all, we have 250 employees within Trillion, and there is something I would like to mention on the call. A recent acquisition done by Trillion was for Primestone. And Primestone is an organization which is excelling in meter data management systems and analytic solutions. So now, as an organization, we can bring both head-in system, RF solutions, and uh, MDMS to the AMI network. Even though we are based headquartered in the US, a strong company in Canada, we are a very decent presence in Asia Pacific also, because we have 75 customers globally in 19 different countries. In Asia Pacific, our HQ is in Singapore, in which myself and the complete team is sitting out of. We have 27 employees. In India, we have five employees, and we plan to increase the footprint in India as our projects roll out and we get more business and traction on the ground. The slide shows we have 28 million endpoints under deployment, which is a strong number out of which 2 million are currently already deployed in South Asia, a million plus in Malaysia and a million plus in India. So that's a strong reference we have in the region and we want to build on this working with our metering partners, with our system integrators like LNTs and our AWS, Accenture, all those cloud partners. I just want to share one example from the global team, which is British Gas. This is the single largest HES instance for 10 million meters anywhere in the world. Currently, we have more than 10 million endpoints on Trillion head-in system. This uses a GPRS cellular-based network. This is part of British gas expansion for the country. The plan is to reach 27 million endpoints, but at present, we are at 10 million endpoints. This is based in the UK, and we have a dedicated team of close to 50 people just to support the network because they consider this as a very critical application because this monitors both electric as well as the gas meters in the houses. And they have a plan to grow this to 27 million by end of 2026. So it's an aggressive plan and we need to have a strong team to support it. Again, coming back to the main thing with our global teams and our global experience, we are able to replicate the British gas experience in India and similarly in Malaysia. This is important because we need to have installations globally so that we can replicate the success in different regions. I was listening to so many 
utility guys in the morning. Every utility is unique. Everybody has its own requirements. The dashboard you'll have in British Gas will be very different from the dashboard you'll have in IntelliSmart ESL project or a BESCOM, or for example, a utility in Korea or somebody in Japan. So we need to provide excellent consultancy services along with our end users and system integrators to ensure the customer gets on the dashboard what he wants to see. So now I will give you a, a brief background on TNB Malaysia. This one is a flagship project for Trillion. We won this project. This was the first project we won in Asia Pacific in 2017 after a pursuit of more than five years where they tried different technologies, different customers, and then they decided let's go with Trillion on RF in cellular, and they also selected a PLC vendor. Currently, the project status is we have deployed more than 1 million meters, which are communicating and commissioned in the state of Malacca and Kale. Customer has realized the benefits now. You know, it's a remote connect, disconnect is there, firmware upgrade, easy to operate and use, tamper alert, improved theft detection. So customer is pretty happy with it. And they have extended the AMI platform from smart metering to smart street lighting. We have done two pilots with them in Melaka and Uniten and demonstrated the benefits of smart street lighting, leveraging the same AMI network. Uh, for people who are familiar with smart street lighting, it basically helps us to schedule the, the lights, how they will dim, how they will operate to op get maximum operational effectiveness and efficiencies so that we don't have lights on in the daytime and in the evening the lights are on in a periodical manner. In addition to this, we've also done a distribution automation project with them. Three pilots are done. We leverage the same network, 100% availability, and latency is only 12 to 32 milliseconds. In addition to this, Trillint is a meter agnostic company. We do AMI when it comes to hidden system, RF solutions, and now with MDMS from Primestone, but we do not manufacture meters which means we have to integrate meters for different projects from different OEMs. In TNB alone, we have done integration from 12 meter OEMs till now for both single phase, three phase RF, single phase, three phase cellular meters. And the program is an ongoing program because every time they bid for new meters, the meter manufacturers need to ensure that they have done the phase one integration, the trillion before they can be selected. So, TNB and Trillion are taking this deployment very seriously to ensure there are no lags, there are no delays. So from day one, we start integrating with meters before they can bid. And once they bid and they succeed, phase two and phase three integration is done, and then the meters are put on deployment. In Malaysia, we have a team of 17 dedicated employees, a project director, a programs director running and managing the show with full support from our global organizations to ensure we are able to meet the customer requirements. The latest SLAs being met are 99.97 and 99.96% on RF and cellular combined on the 1 million install base we have right now. So I just want to cover our technology, how we do. We have both NAN as well as WAN network. We operate on 2.4 gigahertz, which is globally available license-free network. Even in India and in the new CA guidelines, it has been allowed to be used for smart metering. So we are going to push it strongly in the country because we do realize that we have a good solution with 83 megahertz available for NAN and 150 megahertz available for the backhaul 5.8 gigahertz. We support multi-tiered network in one physical infrastructure, as you can see on the diagram. We are connected to the houses on 2.4 and the uplink is on 5.8. In the same network in TNB, we also have cellular backup where the 2.4 gigahertz antenna backhauls over a cellular modem back to MPLS fiber network from TNB. The customer is having a secure, reliable, redundant network with high capacity and they can add smart grid and DA applications to the same network. They have already added street light also in the two POCs or the small de demonstrations we have done for them and even DA. So the customer is happy with the performance and we are hoping to add more street lights because they're gonna have a tender for almost 180,000 street lights by end of the year. 
our neighborhood area network is meter agnostic and our backhaul is device agnostic, like we do the DA connection on 5.8 gigahertz. So we are supporting both RF network meters and all, also on cellular IPv4 and IPv6 in the same network. An interesting thing to note over here is there's a company from, I don't know, from France or somewhere, which was awarded 20% in phase one. They said we'll have 20% PLC. But after they implemented Melaka, they could understand PLC was a failure. So the distribution was 70% to a trillion, 20 or 25% to PLC and 5% to cellular. But they realized that it is not going to work that way because PLC failed. So, so we have to now do almost 100% of the meters. The PLC part is transferred to a trillion in phase one. This is a very important slide I wanted to share. It's not to change the procurement approach of the customers or the utilities in India, but just to share what has been a successful model in TNB. You know, TNB understands each and every component in EMI is very important. So they bid separately to get best in class products. They, after five years of negotiations, pilot projects for thousand meters with them, they realized Trillant is the right partner for communication and heading system. So they awarded the AMI and COPS to Trillant for nationwide 8.5 million deployment, which became a strategic alliance. For meters, every phase, they do a tender. Eight vendors in phase two, for example, MDMS again for phase one and two is Siemens. PMO, system integration IT, tender in each phase. In phase two is ENY. I believe phase one was IBM. The biggest advantage which we have heard from the customer, from the CEO of TNB is they have been able to save 35% revenue on meters because they made meter a commodity. Meters have to be bid, they have to be competitive, not as competitive as India, but still the meters are very competitive if you compare to the European and American markets. So the customer saves on that. RF mesh and cellular under single platform helps them on the OPEX. The deployment is fast, it's less complex and the results are excellent. This is a part of procurement we are talking about, where they standardize on the RF communication provider and the HES provider. Now deployment, you know, within TNB, there's an organization called TNB IT, which is the information technology company within TNB. And they are designing and deploying the Trillion network now. How we worked out with them was in the phase one, till project handover, everything will be done by Trillion. Post and handover for hidden system, they shall be handling. Network equipment is, installation is TNB IT, but the design is done common by TNB IT and Trillion. This was achieved by six to eight weeks of dedicated training to TNB IT personnel, both at US, Canada, and also in Malaysia office to ensure that technology transfer is done properly. And if you guys have a chance to visit Malaysia, you can go to TNB. We can organize a visit at TNB SMOC, Smart Meter Operation Center, which is a state-of-the-art SMOC center they have. And they're very happy with the performance of Trillion Network, our head end system, and the meter installation on ground. You know, when it comes to Trillion, we provide a Trillion communication model, module called TCM or OSDI. This is procured by TNB and sent directly to the meter vendors for them to integrate and send it back to TNB for installation. So benefits is there's a big flexibility in supply chain. You can redirect the volume depending upon which meter vendor has the meters ready. And there's a CapEx saving because they purchase the comms module from us in bulk. They do it like 100,000, 200,000 or 300,000 meters. This is how it goes. And once the meter vendor gets it, he integrates it because integration part is already done by Trillion in the three phases and they send it back to TNB for installation. So if you have any questions, we can discuss now or later, but the strategic procurement approach is not to guide or change what is happening in the country, but just to share what worked over there and what really helped the customers to save on CapEx as well as OpEx after having selected the right comms partner and hidden system partner and making meter as a commodity because a meter without a chip is still a commodity when it comes to a customer, but if the have the right common comms platform integrated before installation, then they can achieve the benefits they want to achieve in this case.
Okay. Now I'll be moving down to India. You know, with all our efforts in India and the good work done by the teams on the ground, we were able to get ESL phase ground from LNT for installation of five million meters on our hidden system on cellular platform. Our teams from Singapore and India were involved in day-to-day -day activity to ensure that we deliver a successful project. Till date, in UP, we have more than a million meters Commission now, this is a little bit uh, the slow now because of what is happening in the last one year, we have had so many lockdowns and there was a UAT which happened in UP, things slowed down. But we do expect as the country opens from July, the meter installation is gonna take up because IntelliSmart or ESL had a very aggressive plans to install this 4 million meters within 36 months. I believe 36 months have passed and they have only achieved 40% of the meter installation. So we have to go ahead very fast. Data collection, monthly billing load profile. This is what is happening on the ground now. The SLA is being met at 90% plus right now. And a lot of time what we are seeing is the cellular network availability is an issue in some of the areas because like Trillient, even for the cellular operators and the prime system integrator, this is the first project in India to install at such a large volume. The second state in the project is Haryana, where we have another 150,000 meters commission right now. So total 1.1 million meters commission. And we did a worldwide survey. This 1 million meters achieved by LNT and Trillent is something very unique. No organization or no utility in the world has been able to install a million meters in 12 months, whether it is cellular or RF or PLC. But unfortunately, from June of last year to May of this year, not even 10% of meters have been installed due to different requirements. Like we have, we have UAT in UP, Haryana UAT was done. Then lockdown is there. Again, last six weeks have gone by. But we are hoping with our team in India that we'll start installation very soon. And once installation starts, we will be able to reach this 5 million meter as per the guidelines from utilities as well as our prime meter, which is LNT over here. Coming back to India, Trillent is definitely interested in getting our organization growth in India. So we have an Indian entity now. We have five people on the ground and we are currently pursuing a lot of projects, both for cellular and RF. And we expect in 12 months from now, we'll have a full fledged organization in India, having its own uh, localized engineering teams along with our project teams to support the active projects. Okay, this is just a snapshot of some of the meter partners with whom which we have integrated. We have Precise. Precise basically uses Tatung from Taiwan. We have Secure from India. We have done several Indian meters. We have done a lot of Chinese meters thanks to TNB project because a lot of Chinese vendors are bidding for them. We even saw a lot of Indian companies coming along with Chinese meters, like we had to do hexing because they came along with Pal Mohan in India for the ESL project. So currently more than 27 meter manufacturers, OEMs have been integrated with Trillion. And trust me, you can ask any utility who has gone, undergone the smart metering AMI journey in India. The toughest part is the meter integration, whether it's an RF or a cellular. So working with a company which has experience and sometimes we come across meters which are already integrated. Maybe they have a different protocol in the country, but if they are integrated, then the integration process becomes easier. It takes anywhere between two to three months for a cellular meter integration, and sometimes up to nine months for a RF meter integration because you have to accommodate the RF module on the NIC card, which goes inside the smart meter. We found out in the project, we worked with IntelliSmart ESL. Meter integration took long time. Sometimes the meter was not ready. Sometimes there was a communication gap. We could not do it remotely because we had to send meters over to our HQ to get it done. But now we have realized the teams on the ground, things are moving well, and we are able to deliver a meter integration from scratch for IS 15959 in six weeks. Trust me, going forward, all the utilities are going to realize meter integration is going to be a tough cookie to implement. And once you get a good meter integration done, your smart metering rollout plans really go smooth.
because if the meter integration doesn't happen, whether it's a cellular or RF, nothing will move. So these are the slides I have. If you have questions, you can raise it to the MC or you can raise it on the platform. The MC will forward to me and I'll try to answer as much as I can. And for some detailed technical questions, we'll come back to you to the organizers. One question I can see is from admin, uh, okay. Can any GPRS communication ensure 99% connectivity? I think for GPRS to ensure 99 point or 99% connectivity, the main thing is on the, how many towers they have and what is the area of coverage? Definitely GPRS can ensure 99% connectivity if there are no black spots and everything is covered. But coming back to a AMI with GPRS, we have not seen 99%. The best we have seen even in British gas is upwards of 97, 98 because cellular connectivity is pretty good. There are no electricity shutdowns, so no tower goes to reverse mode on a generator or something. So things are pretty good. But in, in Telesmart ESL project in India, we only seeing 90% SLAs being met. So yes, this is definitely a challenge. Next question is, any modem comms technologies implemented in LoRa, six low pan NBIT are implemented in India. See, currently on the project which we are doing in India, it's being rolled out on 3G, the current ESL phase one. But what we have also tested is using geo modem, we have tested genus meters on NBIOT. They have not been implemented yet, but what we have done is we have tested NBIOT. And I do understand LoRa and six low pan are installed in different installations, but I don't have the exact locations where they have been installed because LoRa and six low pan are low latency, light networks and not very applicable for an AMI smart meeting project. But yes, NBIRT is the future. And like we were listening to the geo guys 45 minutes back, they have a lot of techno technical advantages and technologies being developed along NBIRT to make it a universal platform. Let's see how it goes. But right now, NBIRT is still in a in fancy stage because 3G, 4G is leading the cellular AMI project in India. Uh, so that was the last question for you. I'm sure this was very late. So people must have slept by now you know, with a hot day going on. Uh, okay. I think we're getting a very good response from the audience. So Okay, good, good, good. You yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a, a great day and uh, this is the end of uh, day one. Uh, we had total of six presentations, three panel discussions. We had amazing emerging sessions from all the panelists. And yes, of course, to tell you that we had very amazing response from the audience as well. Thanks for the sponsors. Thanks for all the panelists and the keynote speakers. We will look forward for the same response even for tomorrow. And uh, for now, this is MC Parveen signing off. We'll see you for day two right tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you.